Seiya is back soon. And wow, does the lineup look good with him in it? We talk about it on Friday's edition of Locked On Cubs right now. Our Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy, and this is Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please support the show and be a part of the Locked On Cubs community by following on all audio platforms, and you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today's episode is presented by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with Game Time. Sam Olber is not here. He is safe in Los Angeles. Today was a travel day for him. Although, according to Nick, prior to hitting record, he underdressed for that trip, as it is. Temperature in the 50s in L.A. And we have a guest co-host, Nick Cozy, my cousin and good friend. Also one of Sam's good friends dating back to when they were single digits. And uh, Nick, so excited to have you along today. Yeah, happy to be here. And Nick was a huge part of Sam and I's origin story as podcasters. Uh, Nick first made his debut on our show. It's actually the second time on our show uh, first debuted at the Locked On Cubs holiday party back in December, uh, which I would encourage if you haven't listened or seen that to go back and and watch or listen. Maybe I'll put that in the description uh, of this episode. Uh, but Nick, so appreciative of you and your friendship, and uh, and and we're going to be talking Cubs um, for a little bit here. Uh, Thank you to everybody, whenever and wherever you may be listening, as the Cubs travel to the Dodgers this weekend to start a six-game road trip. They play the Oakland Athletics following the Dodgers series. Sam will be in attendance for the Friday and Saturday contests of that three-game set. And exciting times for the Northsiders as they enter the weekend six and five, and one of their best players, uh, possibly returning as soon as Friday. Seiya Suzuki ended his rehab assignment on Wednesday with the Iowa Cubs, and he talked to reporters in Des Moines after the game, and it slipped out, albeit in a sly fashion from Suzuki and his interpreter, that he is returning to the Cubs this weekend. Uh, I did message with Megan Montemuro of the Chicago Tribune earlier today, and Megan told me, don't be surprised if Saya is back in the lineup as soon as Friday, and we're going to get a look at that lineup in a few minutes. Suzuki played four games on a rehab assignment with the Iowa Cubs. Looked good both at the plate and in the field. Went four for 13, and one of those four hits was a, a home run. To dead center, by the way. Dead centered. He was having fun in the dugout after that. I yes. saw that. They had a hard hat on him. Uh, so so he always brings a good vibe and, and some fun energy. Yes. Suzuki, back in the lineup, Nick, how big of a deal is this? Well, I think it's a big deal. Um, at the beginning of the year, I anticipated Saya to have uh, monster offensive numbers uh, coming into this, this season. Um, and he'll be, you know, right in the top four of the order with the guys in front of him who have been getting on base already at a solid clip. As you mentioned, they are above 500 with the lack of Suzuki in the lineup. So getting him back behind guys like Horner and Dansby should give him ample opportunity to come up to bat with runners in scoring position. And I believe he is capable of getting the job done more times than not. Absolutely. And he actually wasn't out that long. You know, they, they're only 11 games in and they got through those 11 in a pretty nice fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is still a major boost to the team, you know, and, and even looking at some, some team uh, totals today, you know, the Cubs offensive ranks are, are mightily impressive. There's, there's really no other way to put it. 
They are still on the low end in slugging, fourth to last in MLB in home runs, and perhaps uh, Saya helps the Cubs with that. You you would hope, and and, and I'm confident that he'll provide uh, you know the long ball sooner rather than later. But right now, the Cubs rank fifth in MLB in batting average and seventh in OBP. So it's not like they've treaded water or just skimmed by without him to begin the season. Each game has been pretty consistent at the plate. And we've talked about it this week a few times. It's a surprise, but it's a pleasant surprise. And now you insert an even better player in the order. Um, this only increases my excitement. Right. They've they've started above our expectation, at least yeah. offensively. And the new rules in, in the game are helping, I believe, some of the Cubs players uh, on offense. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the power isn't necessarily there yet, though they still have, you know, they've played a couple games in the colder weather, but we've made the turn right. officially. So the power will come and Suzuki will hit a homer within the first week of being back. Oh, that's a prediction. I'm I think so. I think so. It, it, like you said, it was a, it was a short stint. So I don't think he's lost too much of a step coming into the season. And if anything, he's going to be hungry and ready to go. Yeah, it was the minimum six weeks of that six to eight timeline for for his oblique injury. Um, all reports out of Des Moines were, were real positive, and you know other areas where he's going to help that the Cubs have embraced already this season. You know, one would be would be plate discipline. Um, and, and I would still like to see him be a little more competitive early in the count and attack the first, you know, if not first pitch, the two or th first two or three pitches, if you want to keep those in the same range. Um, there's not too much difference between 0 one and 0-1, um, but it starts to get a little more hairy 0-1. Um, and, you know, I, I think with two strikes, he really competes well in the zone. Um you know, somebody that will accept a walk, work a count. And so all those good, those good baseball things. But really the other area, Nick, is defense. You know, the Cubs have used several right fielders already in these 11 games. And now you have an everyday person there that's going to fortify your team defensively. And he's a plus player out there. Wrigley Field. Right field at Wrigley Field is not a plug-and-play position. Let right. me say it again. It is not a plug-and-play position. You cannot just put anybody you want out there and expect to have relative success on a game-to-game -game basis. So the offensive production is going to help with him returning, but more importantly is you are getting your everyday right fielder back a guy that knows how to play the position properly, a guy that's comfortable playing the position at Wrigley Field, and we will see those benefits on a defensive side of the ball. Let's take a look at the projected lineup that I have for Friday night's ball game. Um, in this order, you could see really in any game, but Justin Steele is in here uh, just as the day's starting pitcher as well. Shout out to Cam with our own Locked On Podcast Network. He's done a great job amplifying this network, and a big reason why is running social media and graphics, and he created this lineup template for us. Uh, I've been using my own templates, and this one is way, way better. Uh, we just inserted the players and, and put a photo in there. So let's look at what the lineup could be. I'm jacked up about it. Um, right here we have Horner at second, Swanson at short, Happ and left, Suzuki and right, Bellinger in center. That's the five spot. Mancini is the DH, Hosmer at first, Wisdom at third, and then uh, the Barnhart-Gomes rotation uh, behind the dish. That one through four um, really jumps out right away. Horner, Swanson, and Happ have opened the season about as good as it gets. Uh, they rank highly in many categories around the league. And outside of the first series of the season, Bellinger has been really good. And, and quite frankly, even some of his outs uh, in that opening series and beyond um, have indicated that he is on the right track. So really that one through five 
I would almost venture to say is impressive. Hashtag early leads. Oh, wow. We're bringing that one back. That dates back to, I think, 2015. Uh, was the last time that we had a successful top of the order. Right, 15, 16, and 17. Yeah. Yeah. Or 15 and 16, really. Right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, listen, with with Horner, Swanson, and Hap getting on base like they are, mm -hmm. Suzuki should come up with multiple of them on base and yeah. be able to deliver some some early leads for our pitching staff. And that's right. that's gonna take us a that's gonna take us a long way. Yeah, and that that really does help in, in this game, you know, for as hard as it is, you get out to even a one oh lead, especially on the road, top of the first. Mm -hmm. uh, that only helps your your starting pitcher. He's going out there. Maybe he takes. Uh, maybe he makes a little more bolder decisions, even with with the lead early on. Um, but I like this lineup. You know, obviously there's still going to be some rotation, or maybe not. Obviously, uh, let's try to break it down a little bit. But I think there is still going to be a little bit of a rotation. You know, DH first, third base. Um, but. You know, all three outfield spots are locked locked in. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a name that's on brand with this lineup, Nick. And I consider this a locked-on lineup. That's what we're going to start using. Locked-on Cubs, locked-on lineup. Okay? I'll go to battle with any of these nine dudes, plus the bench, uh, which may or may not have Edwin Rios on it. Nobody knows where the heck he's at. He never plays. Um, but in all seriousness, this group of players, uh, as we thought all winter, this makes for a competitive club. Competitive, that's the word. I think so. I think so. And and uh, right now, they're, they're projected by Fangraph, 77 wins. I know that, that you have them at higher, right? 82, 83, if everybody stays healthy. Right. If everybody stays healthy... Um... Our pitching staff stays relatively what it is now, and there's not too much up and down, you know, because of whatever issue. 82-83. Cubs had an off day on Thursday. They start a series with the Dodgers Friday night, and we start to preview that series coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. You could do this day of, and you'll always get the best price. You can even get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive, buy tickets in a matter of seconds, only a few taps on your device, and you're all set. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB. That's Locked On MLB in all caps for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with game time. Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day in your ears, Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Nick, how do you usually how do you usually consume the show? YouTube. YouTube. So you're <laughs> you're and you're and you're and you're watching, or you're just it's or it's like listening over here, or, or you're full on. If I'm or a, or a variety, if I'm listening while at work, then sometimes I'll have the phone in the pocket where I won't see you guys. But a lot of times okay. I listen to an episode during my 30 minute morning break. So I'll just right. I'll keep it on the dash. I'll watch you two. You, you, you two perform well. So it's it's good not to yeah. just hear the audio, but to, to see the emotion and see the expressions. Absolutely. No, that's definitely the cool part of, of being on video as well. As Suzuki finds a gap and the Cubs are going to take a 2-0 lead here in L.A. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. I uh, did not expect that. Uh, Cubs are 5-6 and six <laughs> entering this series, and the Dodgers are 7-6. and six. Uh, Probable pitching matchups this weekend, Nick. 
Steele versus Cindergaard, Tyone versus Grove, and Smiley versus Urias. And I'd like to zoom in on Friday's game for now since we're on the front half of this weekend. Uh, this Dodgers roster has two hits off Steele, uh, obviously a small sample size there. Um, but haven't had much success. The players they do have off of the left-hander uh, for the North Siders. Meanwhile, Ian Happ has homered off Cindergaard in the past, and Dansby Swanson, the former NL East foe of the righty Cindergaard, is eight for eighteen. That's a batting average of four forty-four in his career. So, uh, would like those guys to to get off to good starts this weekend. I do think Friday's game is actually a pretty favorable matchup. Yes. Um, I have all the confidence in the universe and Steele. Uh, you know, him and Strowman have really tapped into something with their starts. And I hope Steele follows Strowman's nice outing from the other day for, for his third straight start of the 2023 campaign. Um, but quite frankly, Nick, I want to be greedy this six-game road trip. I I get the, hey, win series thing, but let me just tell you right now, you win this series against the Dodgers two out of three, and you get the brooms out in Oakland against the A's, woo, we're rocking back to Wrigley next week, bro. Listen, I don't think it's crazy to say that the Cubs are going to go two and one in L.A., Okay. We we have the favorable matchup uh, tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyone versus Grove on Saturday. Right. I, don't, I don't think Michael Grove is anything special. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say we have the slight edge on Saturday as well, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna say two and one because Sunday may be very ugly as sure. Urias is three and zero oh on the year. He's got three of the seven Dodger wins. Wow. Uh, Sub one five ERA or a one five on the dot, twenty strikeouts and like two walks. I mean, he's he's arguably their best pitcher now that Kershaw's kind of over the hill. He is, I think, yeah. But listen, you you go two and one, and if you do win the first two with the chance of a sweep, uh, you, your smiles all day when you're waking up Sunday morning. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that's a great that's a great way to put it. First pitch times this weekend, Central Standard, uh, nine ten. 8, 10, and 3, 10. So first West Coast trip. I'm, I'm hot cold on, on the late game times. I know there's uh, 8.30 first pitches, Monday, Tuesday as well in Oakland. Uh, but for a Friday night, a 9, 10, okay, let's go. Let's roll with some late night vibes. Well, you know my sleep schedule. I can't guarantee that I'll be awake for all <laughs> nine, but I'll, I'll certainly try. All right, well, maybe maybe some, maybe a caffeine boost at maybe like 8.30 p.m. Yeah, I'll have a Mountain Dew. Oh, wow. Okay. Code and, red, though. Code red. And, and Sam owes me a Mountain Dew because uh, Edwin Rios didn't start the other day, by the way. Uh, we'll have to follow up on Are that. Are we sure on, he's on, on the team? Show. I actually, I would say no. But <laughs> we'll see what roster moves they make Friday uh, when Suzuki presumably gets activated. Marquee. Tony Andraki of Marquis did report uh, Thursday that Cody Bellinger, uh, Cody Bellinger's wife any day now, um, is going to uh, – Cody and, and, and his wife are having a child. And so Bellinger will go on the paternity list at some point, although it's not clear if that's going to happen uh, before Friday's series opener. So we'll see if the roster moves are delayed. Maybe Suzuki is activated. Bellinger goes to the paternity list. But uh, Cubs do have some decisions to make. Rios, Mastro, and Torrens, probably the ones uh, in jeopardy when Suzuki comes back. And that, that would be unfortunate. Uh, congratulations with the with the oncoming uh, child for yeah. For the, but, you know, it, it's it's back to L.A. You would love to see him get a chance to, right. to – and, uh, I do think, though, with the with the paternity leave, I, I I think he is probably doubtful to to play this weekend. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's wait and see for that. Um, you know, a five and one trip would be awfully impressive, uh, but I'm optimistic, and and I do think really the Friday game uh, could be the key to doing that well on the trip. 
We're going to close up shop by going around MLB for the first time this season. And we do that coming up next. Today's episode is also brought to you by Ultimate Pro Baseball GM. This is the coolest game that I've played in a long time. I've always thought I could be a great major league GM. As it turns out, it's not all that easy. Right now, all the hosts on the MLB channel at the Lockdown Podcast Network are playing Ultimate Pro Baseball GM for bragging rights and a little bit more. And you can play, too. I encourage you to play with your friends and family. In the simulation, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, scouting and drafting players, and navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. Ultimate Pro Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline, playable on the go as you want and when you want to. Locked on Cubs listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in your Apple or Google Play store. probaseballgm.com for ultimate baseball GM to start your dynasty today. Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. We wrap up Friday's show going around MLB for really the first time this season. Maybe something we do on uh, four Friday episodes and kind of go outside the Cubs universe. And really there's one spot uh, that we're going to discuss here for a minute or two. And that is the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, the Rays swept the Red Sox Thursday to improve to 13-0 and on the season. They are still undefeated. First team to start the season with 13 straight victories since 1885. Shout out to Back to the Future. Uh, that was one of the years in the in the films. 13-0, uh, and 0, Nick. Are you serious? Well, they have five guys in their lineup that are hitting above 300 to start the year, so that's pretty helpful. They have a plus 71. Hold on. Plus 71. That's crazy. Run differential. They hit for average. They hit for power. They bunt. They know, how to, they know how to do situational, situational hitting. Right. And then they pitch. They have great pitching. Shout out to Shane McClanahan. He's yeah. a fantasy pitcher. He's got about 30 Ks through his 3 0 start. Wow. You have him on your team? I do have him on my team, yes. Wow, that's a that's a good ace that was the fantasy first, staff. That was the first pitcher I took. So we'll see if they could keep that going. Uh, the Rays play the Blue Jays uh, this weekend. On Monday's program, we recap the Dodgers series. Sam will also give us a report. Uh, from his experience at Dodger Stadium. Uh, assuming he's not frozen. Yes, assuming he brought a hoodie uh, for the unseasonable weather out there, although it's only mid-April. Um, on Monday's show, I'm hoping to have um, my, my, my studio ready, finally. Uh, it only took me uh, about nine or ten months of the program, uh, but excited to have that. And we introduce and announce a way you can continue to support us and be an even bigger part of our team as you make us your first listen every day. Nick doesn't even know about this yet. Uh, we're keeping it under wraps, but uh, we love that you're a part of our team and that you listen or watch every day. And we're going to make an announcement of how uh, that could even increase uh, on Monday. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Lockdown Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button on all your favorite Lockdown Cubs content, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast on the audio side. And you can drop us a text, 312-834-4634. Shout out to Steven St. Louis. I still need to follow up with him on his messages from uh, today. Um, and, and he's in enemy territory as a diehard Cubs fan. So shout out to Steve in St. Louis for the text line. And Nick, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you bet. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, to fill in for Sam. Uh, it's a pleasure. I'll do it anytime. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Go Cubs this weekend. He's Nick Cozy. I'm Matt Cozy. And this is Locked on Cubs. <laughs> 